Hello every friend that uh, have joined us here, hello every new people who have joined us here as well, and welcome to the Geek World's second ever panel. So, so right in front of you over here is Scar. I am Scar. And I'm Carboom, and this is our second time at MCM Comic Con in London. <laughs> well, second time presenting something actually, because it's not my second time. So we have four, four, I think. Four. <laughs> time flies so fast. We have an audience in fire today. <laughs> so, uh, today uh, we're starting with a first panel where we'll be presenting to you our channel for people who don't know us. Uh, and for people who do know us, I'm very sorry, but we'll, we'll, we'll have to deal with that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, who are we? First of all, come on, just sit down. What do you mean? I'm fine standing. Um, so, uh, <laughs> we are a French channel, first of all, uh, coming from Paris, France. Not as glamorous as it could th as you could think, guys. No. Um, it certainly isn't. So, who are we exactly? It's a French channel who apparently comes to English Comic Cons because why not? Um, we do a lot of work on um, with English people who most of them are here actually. I see a couple there, a couple in the back row there, one in the front row just here, um, and. We've been doing this for uh, almost three, three years. years I think. Almost, yeah. This uh, this August it, it'll be three years. Um, we're not a very large channel, but we do a lot of different stuff. We worked mainly on cinema, on uh, role playing games, and on video games. Video games, uh, mainly video games, of course, because uh, videos about cinema uh, take a long longer time uh, to to manage but we do have some stuff coming up very soon that you guys will have the privilege to have a sneak peek uh, of but first of all to introduce ourselves a bit better we are three people normally but apparently I never can manage to get a hold of a third one to come here so it's just us but Calvin here is a very sweet gentleman um, very calm, very, very relaxed every time he plays a game, and I mean really every time he plays a game. And uh, Scarlet Jordan is kind of the opposite of that. Yeah. I am basically an ass. <laughs> yeah, we could say that. And we also have proof of that. Because we did, well, I did edit a small trailer of most of what we did the last past years. Of uh, on Geek World, so if we could just put the trailer, please. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Geek World. I am Scar, and I'm Carboom, and this is Edward, our panda, and this is the first ever channel trailer for Geek World. Enjoy. Mais je m'en fous, moi. Allez. Putain, mais attends. Eh, franchement, je vois un sushi comme ça. <rire> je me dis, qu'est-ce qu'il a foutu je me dis. Donc déjà, bon coucou à nos amis. Brutani, enculé. Was it? Oh, fuck! J'ai tué Roche! <rire> la mâche! Ah il y a le mec qui est sorti au moment où tu mettais son pot, tu l'as craché la prison de la salle. Do not analyze me! I pay people! Non mais, il est vraiment obligé de fermer les portes aussi fort, quoi, sérieux? Ouais. Toi, tu restes là, t'es gentil. Et putain, j'en étais sûr! Donc nous sommes dans la grande salle de Gunto pour terminer en beauté. Tiens, montre la fond le tour du propriétaire. Ah, c'est magnifique. Vous êtes surtout là pour savoir quand est-ce que vous pourrez voir toutes ces merveilles. <rire> Ça tombera pas plus bas. <rire> C'était très con. I stick my head, I stick my finger in the eye socket. What the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> my <finger>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try again. Can I piss on him instead? <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube, Facebook, Twitter and Discord. We hope to see you there for the next videos. Ciao!
So as you can see, it was an eventful year. Thank you, Ben, for the last uh, bit of the uh, DND. I could not not put that in the trailer. Uh, so, <laughs> for context here, what happened with they this? Need context. They they need context because like uh, no, they, they, what happened here is um, in uh, one of the games for the for the people who were there at the FBF panel just before us. Um, this is part of a, a space DND game that I run and invented, um, where mainly people of different species go about in the galaxy. And um, our friend Ben has a very, very peculiar character um, who has a very, very personal way of interrogating people, which includes apparently peeing in their mouth. And it um, works. And it actually works because the guy broke and actually told everything um, because I think you would when an alien is literally emptying himself into you, your mouth and all that. That actually sounded way, way more dirty the way I said it. Like, like, right yeah, now. that's uh, what I was thinking. <laughs> we should move out on the, what we are doing uh, now that um, during the MCM and uh, right after MCM with the current project we have on Geekworks. Uh, so first, uh, um, the part where I was uh, screaming uh, some swear words, as you can see, very calm and relaxed as I am. Uh, that, those are called uh, the carbon flash, where I basically uh, play some flash games. And I actually uh, break them down by categories, and those were the um, impossible platform games. So basically, very good raging material. So there are going to be more of those and more of other categories on that part. The reason why Carbon plays the impossible platform games is mainly because I would break the fucking computer. Um, I have really no patience for those kind of things. It, so, it, as I said, he's the calm one. So if he's starting to insult the thing in the middle of the session, you can just imagine how I would react. Um, but yeah, there would be more uh, carbon flash coming up. There will be also a uh, collab flash where he makes me play games that are shit. <laughs> Not always. I, I mean, the, the first one, Papa Suchiria, was pretty good. We just complete. I don't know what happened when we when we played this game. It's really simple. Just cook sushi. I completely went bonkers and decided to do the worst sushi of all time. I literally took any ingredients that was on the table and fed it to someone until he died. We were very respectful of our customers as well. <laughs> the worst is, I did say in the video, if people wanted in the comments, they could ask me to actually try and eat that sushi. So far, I've been lucky no one asked that, but I don't know whether I did, I did brought that up. I think I'm kind of misogynist on that, yeah. But anyway, we also do a lot of Telltale games. Uh, it's kind of a little relaxing game. So we've been, I've been doing a lot of uh, The Wolf Among Us. Actually, it's almost finished. Um, Carbon just before did The Walking Dead Telltale. I did the first uh, two episodes of the first season, and I will uh, finish it uh, a bit later on, uh, hopefully this year. But uh, as we're approaching the end of um, The Wolf Among Us, uh, we're going because you guys might know or might have heard that Game of Thrones has just finished. So there's also a Game of Thrones Delta game that I was thinking, hmm, people really enjoy the last season. They're probably going to enjoy that as well. So we are thinking of doing the Game of Thrones Telltale, uh, but uh, a bit differently than usual. It's not going to be the uh, usual let's play of just me playing the game and raging on it. It will be both of us playing and choosing characters that we'll play, so we'll have very different approach on each character. I could go completely mental and, this, and we will play very, very smartly. Oh, the reverse, we don't know. Actually, we haven't tried yet. Yeah, both, can, both could happen. And uh, that's kind of the nice part of the Telltale Games, is uh, to see how your choices uh, technically change the course of action. I mean, in theory, in practical part, not so much. But you know. In the same time, uh, so you saw some clips of the RPG game we play. Uh, Space Odysseus. 
And um, as I said, I invented this game, so I had to create the whole backstory of the whole universe, of the whole galaxy, of the whole thing. So I was thinking that it would be a bit of a shame not to actually present that, because that's hours of work, just not used. So with um, very talented voice actors, such as Green Creeps or It's Ben again, um, we are going to uh, do lore videos on uh, the Space Odyssey's game. So, history behind the game, characters, places, and all that. So that's on the table, it's being worked at the moment. We've already done a few um, takes. We just need uh, the effects and the visuals now, but um, soon yes. We yeah, should we'll probably we we'll probably come back uh, more to the space series aspect on our next panel on uh, Sunday, where we'll actually break down how to create a whole universe uh, in writing in in fiction. What are the priorities and um, what are the steps that you have to follow and in what order? And uh, finally, one of the last new things is the impossible uh, uh, RPG game I created called Days After the End, uh, where I decided to um, torture my players, literally. Uh, it's a zombie apocalypse game survival where I can just decide to take a bullet in the head and die. Literally. It happened. It, it happened to... Uh, one of the players second session into the game. On the bright side, we got to loot his candy. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's balanced out. So far, they're still surviving. They hate me for it, but they, uh, they're still surviving. Uh, I really don't know why they're still playing, actually, because every time we play, they just curse me over and over and come back the next week. <laughs> I guess I'm not the only one who's a yeah? Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> We have a lot of new projects that are coming up um, well, shortly. We have been working uh, mainly on gaming so far. You've seen that in the trailer with far more gaming stuff than cinema or uh, RPG. So we wanted to fix that. And we've been um, aiming our channel more on cinema lately with uh, the, first, the creation of our first web series. Um, once again, still on Space Odysseus really related. So, I'm going to talk mainly about that because um, some of you might know a character named Sid in the, in the uh, game. He's a, he's a fairly beloved character. Uh, uh, one of the most beloved, actually. Yeah, he's a fairly beloved character in the, in the game. And he has a... Yeah, I don't know who he is, but... Sure. Um, and he has a very, fairly interesting backstory that we thought would be interesting to see as a web series. So that's, that's the entire thing. The, the web series will be a six uh, episode of 30 minutes about Sid's backstory uh, called The White Lion of Selric. So it's a very big project because we have to create the entirety of it, the costumes, the sets, the effects, find actors who can actually speak English. And in France, it's already a challenge um, we are top tier English speaking French, uh, to give you an idea. Yeah, and we're not perfect, so even if actors also have a tendency to be frightened when they have to speak English. I don't know why, but I guess it's the accent. Um, so yeah, that's the biggest project, I'd say, that we have right now, because we started the castings recently. Yeah, we started to actually get um, a couple of actors, and many actresses actually. And we mainly had one episode written, so that it'll be very difficult to actually finance because it's going to be episode by episode that we'll be able to actually fund this. Um, we got people like Random Shern helping us on the costumes, for example, um, or Emric who uh, designed most of our effects and, uh, and also the banner that you can see at the table that is literally over there on the other side of that black backdrop behind the, the spanels uh, stand. Hi spanels! Um, so that's the main big project. We also, um, you've seen on the trailer, we used to 
review the series, the show Gotham. Um, we had to stop because of YouTube, uh, mainly. Um, but recently, we've been asked again to to try and continue this, so we will be uh, putting back work on uh, Gotham and hopefully finish the show before YouTube takes everything down. But we'll try. We'll do our best. Who knows? Maybe this time we'll come unnoticed. And finally, last uh, MCM, last panel we did one year ago, we teased that we were going to work, that we were working on a critic of Star Wars Seven and Star Wars Eight. I was very adamant about fi finishing this and actually doing it. And for the first time ever, we actually have images that we can show of what it's going to be. So we've been working all year about. Uh, something like five months on this, uh, on this very short piece that is the intro of the critic. Um, mainly possible due to Emery, who's been doing the special effects, he's been doing an amazing job at this, because everything has been shot on green screen. Because obviously, when you're trying to actually parody uh, Star Wars, and you don't have a, an Imperial cruiser at hand, it's a bit difficult to shoot. Yeah, we're working on that. So, uh, for you guys and ladies, uh, we will be presenting to you the intro of the Star Wars critic. in the force. I have felt it. Oh, excuse me. I thought I, the master, would be the one to bring you the news. Sorry if I'm late for the info. I don't spend my life on fucking Wikipedia. Do you know how many bone friends had to die to bring me this news? I, I didn't mean to. Like a lot. Anyway, we have a new enemy, the hater. He could destroy us all. Well, if he could be turned, he would become a powerful ally. What? No! That's not what I meant! He must be crushed! Destroyed! Annihilated! Kill! 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 You seem a little tense today, Master. Just having a hard time right now. So, can it be done? I will try. No! Do or do fuck all! There is no try! Yes, my lord. Your teachings light my way. Thanks, buddy. Well, I'm off to the cantina, so on that bombshell, thank you for calling. And I'll see you, well, next time. Well, thank you a lot, Star Wars, for your uh, contribution to this. <laughs> so, yeah, we've been working on this little piece for four months, five months. Yeah, like basically. But, I mean, to be fair, it was not that long to shoot. It was that long to have the effects, but yeah. Yeah. Just, just this, like the two last lines of uh, spam or screaming at me was 15 hours of work uh, just to get that done. So just that little piece was a month or two on the effects, just straight on the effects. So I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in 10 years when we have the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, by the way, uh, so we, we're going to move more on uh, the cinema part and the RPG part of the channel, but we're not uh, letting down the gaming part. We've got, actually got uh, many more projects um, uh, in our desk. Uh, we just have to take the time to actually properly make them. For, inst for instance, there are projects on uh, Skyrim, on um, other formats of videos, 
uh, on some gaming critics and etc. Uh, so, so a lot of uh, stuff is coming, uh, hopefully w within the next year. And just follow the channel and you see it come whenever it comes. Of course, it takes a long time and a lot of money to fund. So um, it will take like the less money we have, the longer we actually need to do all this. Um, so we've been very lucky actually with the um, Star Wars Critic for the costumes got for free, uh, the lightsabers we got for free as well. So most of it is mainly me um, managing to either borrow or almost steal uh, stuff from other people uh, who have everything I need to actually be able to, 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 do, that, to do that stuff. But we wouldn't be there mainly without our friends, uh, FBF, Green Creeps, Gamehawks, Spanners, Luke and James, um, because they've been pushing us uh, since we started to continue to always improve, to always go beyond what we thought we could do, um, despite us being annoying little French. <laughs> um, they, 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 they took care of that little channel um, that didn't really know what they were doing to try more and see what happened. So, as it's the second time we're here, I think we could say it's going wellish. Wellish, yes. Wellish. Wellish is a good term. Um, so, yeah, they're all there. Mainly, yeah, I think they're actually all there. Maybe the congents might not be. Uh, so, so, um, some, but some. if you want to see that, they're all in the studio space. That way, literally there. You go, you see Spam Ozuki, Luke and James, and uh, Gamehog, and on the other side of that uh, wall, you see FPF, you see Queen Grips, and you see us. So come and see us, come and ask for more. Anything, questions, stuff that you want us to answer. Um, speaking of which, by the way, uh, speaking of the RPG parts, there's uh, one way that we actually have uh, strong collaboration with uh, FBF, uh, who is over there, John especially, <laughs> because FBF is not just John, John is a lot of FBF, but <laughs> not <laughs> anything. Um, as we have uh, an RPG campaign actually, uh, Scar and I are both on uh, several campaigns, uh, along with some FBF members. And the funny part is that those campaigns are connected. They're part of the same fictional universe that we like to refer to as the FBFCU. So this is actually also a part of, us, um, of our work to actually uh, get to play with friends on D&D, which sounds like a really tough work. It's mm, a bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you want to see us uh, regularly, we are mainly on the FBS channel uh, every Sunday or so, uh, one or two times a Sunday, um, playing D&D on Wednesdays as well. Um, for now, I, we haven't got the possibility due to internet problems to actually stream our own D&Ds. So one day, hopefully, when I move places with better internet, I'll be able to do that. But for now, we're also playing a game tomorrow. We'll also be playing a game, indeed, a live D&D session tomorrow evening. Six till seven. Six till seven. I don't know who said that to me. Um, <laughs> a little bird probably the you. probably the voice is in your head again. Exactly. Probably probably someone in my head. Uh, so six to uh, seven. Seven. Thank you. <laughs> um, we'll be playing a live D&D game here on the stage with uh, a lot of members of FBF or others. Both of you, Ben <laughs> and Sean. You just don't do it. What the voice said. Mic, actually. <laughs> um, well, we, we are going to wrap up uh, this thing with uh, questions and answers, if you have any. So here's your time to ask anything. Hello, Scar and Kabu. I love this voice. Hello. Tell me, what is the worst game you have ever played? I mean, that's a, that's a tough question because that, it all depends on what you mean by the worst. Because if I were to say the worst uh, game, like the most raging one, 
that will probably be give up of which you saw a little piece over there. And it was like, uh, I was not even mid-video when you saw me scream like that. Um, if you tell me the worst uh, game, like the most shit one, uh, a lot of those. It's a tough, it's a, it's a tough game. Okay. Um, just to say you're a really bad one. Well, there's no game is kind of shit on its own. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny kind of shit, so you know, you, you still get a good laugh out of it, but at the end you're like, I have wasted a bit of my time on this. Huh. Um, on my part, the hardest game I've ever played was probably getting over it. Because I just, I, I, I started it, then just took the mouse and stopped it immediately. Um, but the, the, the sh it's not really the shittiest, it's, I had the worst time on it, uh, it was Harry Potter and the o Order of the Phoenix, I think, yeah, Order of the Phoenix, not because it's a, it's not really a crap game, it's just that 90% of it is you cleaning up after every student in Hogwarts, and I was like, that's the caretaker's job, not Harry Potter, so, um, after cleaning up all the broken vase and dusty piece of armor and for some reason paintings that were in the toilets um, because that's where you put paintings apparently I had the, 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 the pleasure to you know find Voldemort and all that and it literally consisted in me taking the mouse and going blah, 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 like this and just flinging any kind of spell that could work and when it's the climax of the thing and you just spam things completely hazardly and then the game finishes and it says wait it's not actually completely over because guess what you got a whole new floor to clean <laughs> Another good one or so is um, the Star Wars game on... Um, ah, it's not on PlayStation, I don't know how it's called again. You know the little camera that's... Uh, Connect! Connect, thank you. Uh, because on the lightsaber duel, when you hear that, you will suddenly get dreaming, being like, yeah, I'm going to fight a good Jedi. And for some reason, it doesn't respond to your movement. So you have to, have to do that, and you see the guy being like... Like it, it's not, it, it seems like some weird rock, paper, scissors when they just show their sabers in different positions and they're like, yeah, I win! I put my saber like this and you put yours like this. So, yeah, not the kind of like, saber fight you would expect. I didn't know you played the Kinect one, I'm very sorry for you. <laughs> so, anyone else has a question? We rule at this. <laughs> Um, so since you do like space and dizziness, yeah, dizziness, yes. yes. <laughs> um, do you prefer the more futuristic D and D style, or do you prefer traditional? I wouldn't say that. I'd rather create other worlds and other kind of possible related RPGs than um, you know fantastic D and D. Mainly for the fact that. Well, all the other RPGs are set in, you know, Fantastic World, where I play a dwarf, I play an elf, whatever like So, to create a new world and actually propose that to the players is a bit, I'd say not more interesting, but, you know, it's more diverse than, you know, just saying, hey guys, I got another game where you can play another dwarf, or elf, or orc. And I like, I'm a big fan of Star Wars, as you might have seen. Um, so, yeah, the first thought that came into my head when I, when I was told, well, I told myself that I would create a D&D game was, well, you know what, space. Space is cool. But the second one I did was a zombie apocalypse, so not just in space. Yeah, on my part, I'm, uh, I'm a bit uh, divided between uh, fantasy and sci-fi because I love uh, both. But I, I wouldn't usually mix uh, them uh, either, but I, I think they both got a lot of, uh, of appealing. Uh, they both allow a huge, uh, they both dedicated a huge part to the imagination, which is actually uh, the part that connects the most with me. I love uh, discovering a world that's not only uh, imaginated, but well imaginated, where the rules are well set, 
where you can actually understand how it works and actually uh, use your own imagination to uh, try thinking how would a character of your own interact with that world. So that's actually what I love and what I uh, most of the time find in fantasy and sci-fi, which is why I love both of this uh, genre. We had one more question. So, out of all of the characters which you play, what is your favorite character and why? <laughs> you go first, Gamma, and you just think better. Let me think. Uh, what is my favorite one? That's a, that's a good question because I have lots of affection for every character I create. I always try to make them uh, into characters that I like and, of course, uh, make them work with the group because if you're only the only one that's having fun, it's way less fun. Anyway, uh, at this moment, I would say it's probably Valonun from Space Odysseus because uh, I'm usually very much playing uh, intelligent characters, uh, characters who use their minds and as such lack in the physical uh, parts. But another is the opposite of that. He's really got a humongous strength. He's eight feet tall for those who don't know it. Um, basically, he's like Tenno's size with a sword uh, that, is, that's, that is fitting his size. So basically, when he's uh, starting to fight, it gets messy. And it, it makes it very enjoyable to fight, uh, uh, especially since he's so focused on the battle aspect that he gets way ahead of everyone in that aspect. But he still needs a lot of the other people for every other department because, I mean, you can't ask him to plan a strategy because his strategy would be go right ahead and crush everything. And he will succeed in that. Alone, though. <laughs> That's the downside of it. Um, for me, I'd say it's a tie. I'm sorry. Uh, I can't really choose between um, Dagma and Barum. Um, Dagma because he is a uh, the greatest asshole I've ever played. Um, for people to, to figure it, to, to understand, he is a human fighter pirate, chaotic. So I just do what I want, really. It, not not really what I want, but he is the kind of guy who would basically just shoot you just because you step on his foot. And when you play a lot of very lawful characters who respect the rule, etc., just having the, the possibility to break every rules and just be like, yeah, I don't care, I'm a pirate, is very funny. And the second one, Barroom, is uh, it's probably my favorite for two reasons. First of all, he's a dwarf, and I love dwarves. Uh, he's a dwarf uh, barbarian who is dumb as a brick. Um, he would not be able, I think the GM who's right there told me once that Barum had just over the intelligence of a very dumb animal. Um, it's probably the intelligence of a smart dog. Yeah, intelligence of a smart dog. So he is the dumbest character I've ever played, which is very fun because then I don't actually have to plan anything, I just let the others do the, the work for me. But he is very strong and he likes to hug people with his spiky armor, which usually ends with them either having their spine crushed or with lots of holes in them. Also, the second reason why I really love Barum is that I was able to do the worst and most bizarre things with him, such as manage to get rid of a dragon by offering him an apple. Um, or literally um, deciding, well, helping my friends to decide what side of the battle uh, that was going on they should choose by literally charging in and just telling everyone, hit me! <laughs> and the first that would hit me would be considered the enemy. And of worse, he's still alive, still doing well, and he actually, I don't think he minds being that, that, that dumb. So yeah, th those two. The, the dumb one and the, uh, and the horrible one. I have plenty of characters I like, but those two really, really take the pick. So, on these words of wisdom about uh, he doesn't uh, mind being dumb, <laughs> I think we're going to wrap up for the panel. Exactly, because other people are 
uh, going to go for the panel afterwards. So, and I don't really want to leave this couch, however. But, uh, I that's that's move, but thank you all for coming anyway. Thank you for coming, seeing us, despite us being annoying as uh, heck. Uh, if you want more of those annoying Frenchmen, we'll be back here on Sunday evening. Uh, where we will discuss how to create a fantasy world or a science fiction world in uh, cinema or script writing or just general writing. So see you there for those who want to and thank you for attending. Thank you.